Hello friends, welcome back, hope you're doing well. Today I'm in Luminar Neo and I'm gonna be walking through uh, a landscape image that I took on one of the uh, Luminar adventures in Iceland. And this video is really about lighting the landscape. I'm gonna obviously adjust the light quite a bit. I'm gonna use some of the new tools, some existing tools, lots of different masks. I'm gonna do a little bit of color work as well, but this is primar primarily about lighting the landscape and showing you how you take a base photo, a raw file, which always needs editing, and how you can manipulate things to essentially achieve the vision that you have for the photo, get the light in place, make things pop, make it really kind of jump off the screen without overdoing it. That's what we're doing today, and we're using this photo. So that is what the base image looked like, raw file straight out of the camera, unedited. It currently looks like that, and as you can see here, I started already in develop raw just to save us time. I did some pretty simple stuff, camera light profile, a little bit of work here in the light section, a little bit of blacks and whites, tiny bit in color, a little sharpening and auto distortion correction. So what that did for me was that, which is there it is before and there it is now. So that's my current state. And then of course, my one, two punch, really one, two punch is develop raw and then super contrast. That hasn't changed even with the new tools simply because I just feel like those two together give me the best possible start on the light without having to get into masking and all those kind of things. I love masking uh, and there's nothing wrong with it and you don't have to do it this way. This is just my way, but I feel like develop raw and then uh, super contrast is the way to do it. So there it is before and there it is now. And so what I'm going to do now is jump over here and I see a couple of spots. First, let me erase those. Then we're going to jump into how I go about really lighting this landscape up and creating the vision that I have for the image. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is, of course, the waterfalls are a big part of this. For me, my eyes go to the waterfall and they kind of slide and follow the water downstream. And also I care a whole lot about Kirkjafell, the mountain in the background. But in order to make those waterfalls pop, I'm going to use a new masking tool, which is called Object Select. So I open Develop, I click on Object Select, and it goes through here and I hover and I've got a waterfall, one click, and it's kind of selected one click and the other waterfall is selected and all I'm going to do is sl uh, slightly brighten those and that is because uh, as a main focal point of the image I want them to stand out a little bit more and while they were uh, white and kind of white enough really before and after they look a little bit better now. I I'm biased because this is what I like to do to waterfalls is generally just uh, mask them in with one of the masking tools doesn't really matter which one but object select grab them perfectly did that, brought that a little bit uh, higher in brightness, and now my waterfalls are jumping off the screen a little bit more. So I'm gonna close that, and I'm gonna move into a new tool, which is Water Enhancer. There's definitely water in this image, and I like this tool a lot. I've been using it a lot and uh, having a lot of fun with it, as I suspect you are as well. Um, I generally start like the tw high, you know, mid to high 20s, low 30s, kind of something like that. I don't want to overdo it, right? I don't want this crazy over the top color. So uh, I want to go kind of subtle and I'm going to pull that blue down a little bit. I, I like the blue and I want it to be blue. I just don't want it to be over blue. I don't want to overdo the blue. Um, I am also going to bring up the brightness. So that's one of the nice things about it. If you look at it, it's brightening up that water nicely. And something I like to check is when I hover, how much of the water is covered? Well, a pretty good amount, but it's also getting some of the waterfalls, some of the sky and all that. So I'm gonna go into refine area and erase, and I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna start by erasing that. Now, that is water, but it's so far in the distance, I don't care about making an impact. That is sky, not water. And I don't wanna mess with my waterfalls because I just went about brightening those. I don't want them to get any of that blue. I, um, I just wanna leave them the way they were. And I'm going to click on draw, and I think there's a spot in here that needs a little bit of work. But really, I mean, that looks pretty awesome, I, I think. And so I was able to quickly and easily uh, grab the water, thanks to this new tool, and basically adjust it a little bit more blue, which fits with the image. I don't want to make it too blue, like I said. I'm not trying to overdo it. Uh, but a little bit more blue, and then a little bit brighter. And a tiny adjustments with the refine area with the draw and the erase brush just got it i think just basically nailed so there it is before and there it is now now of course the waterfalls are a huge focal point for me in this image and one of the things i like to do when i'm trying to draw attention and really light up a certain area of the photo is to use accent ai in this case i'm going to use a radial gradient and i want to put this over here and what i want to do is just make something a little bit large, kind of covering a decent amount of this area. 
and maybe slightly tilted, uh, something maybe about like that. And all I want to do is give that a little bit of a pop. So I'm going to give that a maybe a, a 20 or something. As you can see, it's going to create a little bit more interest there because it's brighter and the eye is drawn to things that are brighter. So if you look at the before and the after, brightens up that little center section pretty well, I think. And I think that looks uh, pretty nice overall. So speaking of overall, so far, I think we're lighting up this landscape pretty well. Before and current state. Now I'm not done. I got a few more moves I want to do. And one of the things that I like the most, in fact, it is the thing that I like the most, is luminosity masks. And let me give you a great example of why they're so, so useful. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to adjust this guy. It's a little bit too bright. I want to play with it a little bit. So you can go into mask and you've got mask AI, which I used to use a lot. It'll grab this guy, but it doesn't have a gradient along the edge. It just grabs this guy. Well, object select is the exact same thing. So if I pick object select and hover, it grabs the sky, but here it missed a little bit, which is easy to fix. But if you look up here along these edges, it it, it doesn't have a gradient. It doesn't fade. It's just an abrupt stop along, uh, stop along the edge. That can work in some scenes depending on what you do, but I'm gonna darken this sky. So if I have that light edge, I'm gonna get a halo around that. So that's not going to work. So mask AI, object select AI, great tools, certainly useful for certain things. Not going to work here. And that's where my old favorite new, old, old uh, my new favorite thing, uh, an old friend from other apps comes into play. And that is the luminosity mask. Because I can come in here and I can quickly isolate the different tonal areas, right? So you can see what I'm doing here, just kind of moving that to where it's kind of collapsing into the sky. It is getting some of the water. I'm going to have to adjust that with a brush, uh, an erase brush to be specific. But I'm going to fade this a little bit, and I'm going to fade that maybe something about like that. Um, but as you can see, along those edges, it's perfect. I mean, it's per. I couldn't do that as well if I did it really slow, zoomed in with a brush. I just, I couldn't do it. Maybe you can. Maybe you're super precise. Maybe you've got a really steady hand. I don't. It ain't ever going to work for me. This works, and this works really, really well. So uh, I'm going to do something about like that. Uh, so my luminosity mask looks fantastic, but I want to go in, and I can stack these together, get the erase brush, and I'm going to come over here, and I want to erase the luminosity mask from this bit of the water, right? Because I told you I'm going to darken the sky, and I just a moment ago lightened a lot of this area, including the water, and I don't want any of that lightning to get... Uh, overdone by the darkening I'm about to do in the sky. So something about like that. I cleaned all that out. I think that looks fine. And now my luminosity mask to the rescue really just saved me on this photo and allowed me to come in and do what I want to do to the sky, which is drop the exposure. And I'm not going to have a halo along the edge because I've got that beautiful faded blended mask that just grabbed the tonal areas that I told it to grab. It's a great, great demonstration of why luminosity masks are just, uh, you know, mwah. I love them. They're just absolutely the best. So I'm going to do something like that. So a little bit darker, maybe a little bit more blue, maybe a tiny bit of tint, uh, maybe not so much tint, maybe just a tiny bit of that, uh, maybe a little bit more blue. Um, I'm just changing the tone slightly, but what I don't want to do is create uh, that halo along the edge, which it would have had if I had object select or mask AI. So sky before and sky after beautiful beautiful blend luminosity mask uh, i mean i just won't shut up about it i love them that you just can't you can't convince me that they're not the best thing in the world so uh there we go got that coming along and now i'm going to go do another new tool because i am enhancing the mood here in addition to lighting the landscape and this is going to be twilight enhancer and i'm going to come on come in with mauve 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 i say mauve i have no idea uh However you say it is great. Um, I don't know how to say it. I say mauve, but I think some people say mauve, whatever. You get the point. I'm going to shut up about it. But if you look at the before and the after, it did a pretty good job of making that look the way I want it to look. But I mostly want that in the sky again. So you can actually stack like these kind of masks and use them on um, things like Twilight Enhancer. Twilight Enhancer is designed to impact the entire photo, but I don't really want a lot in the... Uh, in the foreground, I really just kind of wanted that in the sky. So what I should have done is actually copy and paste the mask from that last tool. That would have been a lot smarter. Uh, and I recommend that you do that. But this is just an example. Um, I can just come in pretty quickly, isolate that area again, 
And then once again, I'm going to have to go out and get the brush and the erase because I want to remove it from the waterfalls because it's kind of messing up that, uh, that look for me. Okay, so there you go. Uh, should have copied and pasted from the other tool, but the bottom line is pretty quick and easy to go in with Twilight Enhancer. Just make a, a gentle, gentle kind of adjustment there to the sky, and I might even pull that back a little bit. I'm just trying to give the sky a little bit more character. I just don't want to do too much. And I really just wanted that in the sky because I'm going light, but I don't really want a lot of the foreground adjustments and things like that. So again, Luminosity Mask really helps me out there. So before and after. Okay, and I mentioned earlier that the waterfalls for me in that area is really the focal point of the photo. So I'm going to do another thing, kind of repeating a similar idea to what I did earlier where I used a radial gradient with Accent AI to kind of accentuate that area. Well, I'm going to do something similar here, but I'm going to do it just with the... Uh, the develop tool and I'm going to pull this in make that a little bit tighter in the center and maybe a little bit longer a little bit tilted and maybe expand that region or that range just a little bit so something about like that and just give it a tiny tiny slight bump in exposure something like that I don't want to go too high because it is bleeding over into the grass which by the way if you like it everywhere except in the grass you can just go in with a brush and just erase it from there if you want to, because these masks are stackable. But if you look at the before and the after, it's just a tiny, subtle little pop right there. And I just wanted to bring that section to life. Now, in thinking about lighting the landscape, and I feel like I got most of the landscape looking pretty good, but one of the things I like to do is, um, if there's not a really strong foreground element that sticks out and really grabs your attention and is a key component of the composition, I like to come in with like a linear gradient and just kind of darken that area a little bit. So all I'm doing, and I'm gonna fade this kind of generously into the photo. Um, I don't want it to be too obvious or too strong. So maybe something like that where it's halfway off the, off the image and just drop the exposure a little bit. So I'm just kind of fading, uh, dropping that exposure, darkening that a little bit just to remove a little bit of that visual uh, element. See that grass is a little bit brighter right there, but now it's a little bit darker. And having lightened the stream and brought up the color and lightened the waterfall, I think that even further kind of forces your eye almost to go stare at the, uh, at the waterfall. So uh, that works quite well. Uh, there's another tip I like to use when I'm lighting a landscape, and that's in color. And while I did tell you I was going to do a little bit of color work, and I, I am doing a little bit of color work with like, Water Enhancer and Twilight Enhancer, and a little bit here. This is also a tool to use to lighten, uh, light up a landscape, and that is because in this HSL section, there's something called luminance, and these are the brightness values of individual colors. And so what I want to do is these yellows are pretty strong and pretty, uh, pretty bright, so I'm going to bring those yellows down a little bit. Now, I don't want to go too far. I don't want the landscape to be dark, but it was like that, so it's a little bit of a pop some of which is my a couple of uses of the radial gradient in that area. But I'm going to bring it down just a little bit, and that's impacting the yellow everywhere. You can mask it in if you need to. Uh, but I'm going to take the blue, and I'm going to bring that up a little bit. So it's going to slightly brighten the water. So I'm creating a little bit more contrast there where this water and the waterfalls are brighter, the land around them are a little bit less obvious, and I'm also going to go into saturation of the yellow and maybe pull that down just a hair. Uh, only because I don't want it to stand out too uh, too much. So if you look at the before and the after, it's a little bit more subtle. And in fact, I think I'm going to bring back a little bit on some of that luminance. I do like it, and I like the yellow because it's a good complement to the blue. I just don't want it to be too dominant. So every image is different. You're going to have to experiment, of course, but that's an idea. Even when you're thinking about lighting up a photo or lighting the landscape, using the luminance sliders in HSL, lightens and darkens certain colors, which allows you to illuminate a landscape. So before and after. And the last thing I'm going to use is vignette. And uh, you know, you might not think of a vignette as lightening a landscape, but there is this little thing called inner light, which is so, so good. And I usually stick it on my subject, which is, of course, those uh, beautiful waterfalls. And it's a light one, and I'm going to go kind of round, and I like heavy feathering. But just a subtle little touch of that light adjustment before and after it creates a little bit more visual int interest there. It kind of darkens as it runs off the edge of the screen to the right. And that gives me really my final image. So if you look at the before and the after, you can see that there's a lot of things you can do, a lot of control you can take. And in fairness, 
I'm not using every tool. Like I didn't use Relight. Uh, I didn't use Mystical or Glow and some of these other uh, things like that. I didn't even use Structure, which if you notice when you use Structure, it can actually brighten up an area. I didn't use any of that. So there's a lot of other ways uh, to lighten up different parts of an image. This wasn't a comprehensive list. This was a demonstration of how I light up a landscape. And these are the tools I use most often for doing so and kind of the approach that I take. But if you look at the before, typical raw file, obviously the sky, the source of light is going to be brighter than the foreground, which is, you know, not going to be the source of light, but pretty dark, kind of blah overall. And now a lot more visually interesting, a lot more pop. There is a lot more color in it. And of course you can adjust that if it's a little too colorful, but you have so much power and control with Luminar and with all these different tools, Water Enhancer, Twilight Enhancer, obviously Accent AI, using Develop again and again and again is super important, I think, with uh, with different masks. And then, of course, Object Select comes in handy and the greatest tool of all time, Luminosity Masking, comes in handy. One more time, before and after. That's how I light up a landscape, my friends. Hope it helps. Hope it gives you some ideas. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video, which is coming soon. And you guys take care. And until then... Adios.